Hi, I'm glad you could join me today. I'm in the book of Proverbs. Now, Proverbs is uh, written primarily and traditionally by Solomon. Solomon was one of the wisest men ever to have lived. He was, of course, the son of David, and he was the king of Israel then for about 40 years. And he, and he wrote the book of Proverbs, he wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, according to our uh, tradition. He wrote the book of so uh, the Song of Solomon. And all of those were parts of his writings and the wisdom literature of the scripture. Now, Solomon, mostly when he wrote all of these Proverbs, mostly they were individual phrases that, um, that, that stood on their own. Um, there's a way that seems right to a man, and the end thereof is the way of death. All by itself, that's all contained. That's what he, he, his whole understanding is contained in that particular proverb. And that's normally what we see in most of the proverbs. But in Proverbs chapter 9, we see some repeated, uh, a repeated phrase that is contrasted in one part to the other part. And, and, and Solomon, when he was writing this, was trying to make that contrast. And it's very important that we see that contrast in order to understand what Solomon is trying to say. Now, the reason we know that that's what he was trying to do is that he uses the exact same phrase in two different contexts. And so in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 4, he says, Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. And in, that, in the context of that paragraph, it is wisdom that is speaking. And so he's saying to the people, look, if you want to keep from being simple or naive, then turn and find wisdom here. But later on in the book of, in that same chapter, verse 16 uses the exact same phrase, whoever is simple, let him turn in here. Only this time it's being spoken by a woman of folly, an adulteress, a prostitute, if you will. And she is saying, if you're simple, if you're naive, turn in here and I will destroy you. And so here in, in this particular chapter, Solomon is comparing wisdom with foolishness. And he says, if you're simple, if you need, need education, if you need to, uh, if, if it's your desire to uh, avoid being naive and simple and, and foolish, then find wisdom. And whoever is simple, turn in and find wisdom. On the other hand, those who are simple that have no desire to really pursue wisdom, who, have, who, who are just living by the, the emotions of the day, who, who have no particular desire to understand truth and understand proper, um, uh, proper behavior, if you're simple, Turn in here, the, the prostitute says, the woman of, of folly says. And so this particular phrase is used to compare these two, wisdom versus foolishness. And now we live in a world in which wisdom is not really understood as having that moral quality that, um, that, that the Proverbs talk about. We think that wisdom, somebody is wise if they have lots of degrees behind their name. And, and certainly there are, there are wise qualities that that person has, uh, has accomplished. Uh, the diligence to go through and, and attain the various degrees is a very commendable thing, and that's right. But it's not necessarily wisdom. Solomon puts that moral quality to wisdom, and he's, and he's comparing that right here. The person who is simple, the person who is naive, 
needs to make sure that he addresses his simplicity with wisdom. And if he doesn't, then the, the prostitute, the woman of folly, is going to bring him down because he doesn't recognize the wisdom that God has given. We in this generation need to have a better understanding of what wisdom is. We need to see that, that wisdom and folly are, are moral qualities that we need to uh, recognize. Adopting wisdom and drawing near to the Lord in wisdom, applying morality to our lives based upon the scripture, that's what wisdom really is. And you don't have to have the degrees behind your name in order to be a wise person. And if you do have the degrees behind your name, it's no, no insurance that you are wise. But hopefully, it has made sense to you that you need to live your life in a moral and in a proper kind of way. Father, as we bow before you, we thank you for educating us, not with books and not with, uh, uh, with, with classrooms, but thank you for educating us with the truth with the moral qualities that you apply to our lives day by day. And we ask you to help us to be receptive to these. Help us to listen to your discipline and draw near to you. And in that way, apply wisdom to our lives. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day.